Welcome to another episode of Bar Progression. Today we have a head-to-head -head fight to the death of the two best action cameras on the market right now, the Osmo Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12. I've been using both of these cameras extensively throughout the winter in the harshest conditions. And today we're gonna show you the most thorough side-by-side -side comparison, comparing the image quality and audio quality of both of these cameras in a variety of different scenarios and settings. We're also gonna talk about battery life, stabilization, how idiot-proof each of these cameras are, ND filters, my filming and color Color grading process and what I think each of these cameras do best. If you want to skip ahead at all in the video, there's chapters down below so you can find exactly what you're looking for. A huge thank you to DJI for sponsoring this video. They reached out to me to make this comparison video. I'm a big fan of theirs. I've been using their drones for years and I absolutely love their image quality. However, I've been using GoPros for a long time and GoPro has been supporting me. So I have been very outspoken about the quality of GoPros in my videos before. So for this head to head, I'm going to show you guys all the footage, all the data, and you can make your own opinions. I will tell you what my opinions are at the end, but ultimately I'm going to leave the decision up to you what you think is the best action camera. Before we go any further in this video, make sure you hit the drop down and select the highest quality 4K resolution possible for this video so you can see accurately what is represented in each of these images. Now I could talk about all the specs that these cameras have, but that would get pretty boring pretty quick. So instead I'm going to list them all on the screen for you. If you want to pause the video and take a closer look at all of them, please feel free to do that right now. I'm also going to throw up a list of all the settings I use for each of these cameras on the screen right now. A lot of you guys ask me what settings are best to use for the GoPro and for the Osmo Action 4. Well, here they are. All right, let's jump into the comparisons. First of all, we're going to do sound quality. I'm going to show you guys some clips with raw audio taken directly from each camera without any modifications whatsoever with what I'd call moderate winds and average conditions weather-wise. Now both of these cameras offer an external option for audio that you can purchase separately. The audio for the GoPro can be upgraded with the media mod. I don't personally have the media mod, but I have upgraded the audio of the GoPro with a personal modification. I'll talk about that in a minute. And I also have DJI's Mic 2, their lavalier wireless mic that connects wirelessly without any kind of a dongle or accessory with the Osmo Action 4 versus the media mod that's necessary for the GoPro. Instead of the media mod for GoPro, I always add these little dead cats, both on the top microphone and on the front microphone. I'll leave a link in the description below to them. They're on Amazon, they're very cheap, but you can just adhese them on the front and on the top. And in my opinion, that gives you excellent audio quality right out of the box without the need for the media mod. Now I tried to do the same modification on the Osmo Action 4 and I put it on the top with success, but I was not able to attach it on the front microphones just because of the way they're designed. I could maybe super glue it on there or something, but I honestly was worried about damaging them. So with these DIY modifications, here's the audio for both cameras. <laughs> And now we'll add a third audio source, the DJI mic, and we'll show a comparison between the audio of the mic and then the audio of the GoPro and the audio of the Osmo Action 4 with the dead cats installed on them. How's the audio sound right now? How's the audio sound right now? You got the audio going from the mic? Personally, I think the audio sounds best either with the GoPro with the dead cats attached or the mic 2 on the DJI. For the rest of this video, all the audio will be taken directly from the camera bodies with these dead cats attached. I'm only really using the microphone if I want the dialogue to be louder than everything else and clearer than everything else. We'll throw a little icon on the screen indicating which camera's audio we're using for each clip. On the DJI here, 4K 60 Rocksteady Plus. 
on the widest it goes. Now the Osmo Action 4 Adventure Combo comes with ND filters. They're DJI's branded ND filters. GoPro does not have their own branded ND filters, but they do sell Polar Pros on their website. So we have been using these. Most of the footage we're looking at today is with ND filters for both cameras, but I will let you guys know when we're not using the ND filters. One of the things I wanted to show off was the low light capabilities of both of these cameras. The Osmo Action 4 has a 1x1.3 sensor and the GoPro has a 1x1.9 sensor. Earlier this season at Snowbird, I was going from Peruvian into Mineral Basin through the tunnel and I was pretty blown away with the low light capabilities of the Osmo Action 4. So here's some side-by-side -side footage of both of those cameras. All right, we got a little low light test now going on in the tunnel. Can't think of a better place. We're shooting on manual exposure, no ND filters, 60 frames a second, 120 shutter speed. All right, we're back on auto exposure and we're gonna do a comparison on how well the lighting changes going from inside the tunnel to outside, probably the brightest conditions possible. Next, we're gonna talk about stabilization. Now, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from the Osmo Action 4, to be honest, because GoPro kind of pioneered the whole stabilization game. But I'll show you some side-by-side -side comparisons and we'll just let the footage speak for itself. Now, with each of these cameras, there's all kinds of different options that you can use. It's not just one stabilization fits all. So we'll do our best to cover what I think are the best settings to use for stabilization. But the general rule of thumb is the higher the resolution or the wider the field of view, the worse the stabilization is and the tighter you crop, the more you zoom in, the better the stabilization gets. I personally like to shoot in as large of an image as possible. Both cameras offer a square frame that uses the whole size of the sensor versus a 16 by nine crop. So whenever possible, I try to shoot in those modes. And that just gives you the most flexibility in post when you're editing your footage if you want to crop off the top or the bottom for a landscape or you wanna crop off the sides for something vertical. Both of these cameras have what you call horizon leveling and horizon locks. Horizon leveling keeps the image as still as possible until you rotate the camera a little bit past about 45 degrees. But theoretically, if we rotate more than 45 degrees, it's gonna do some switching stuff. Yeah. Whereas Horizon Lock allows you to rotate each camera completely 360 and the image stays absolutely still with the horizon completely level. But the GoPro does 4K 60 and DJI only does 2.7K. Now the GoPro does have an advantage with an add-on you can get called the Max Lens or the Max Lens 2. That gives you an even wider field of view with a horizon lock. So I will show you guys some footage of what it looks like with the Max Lens 2 mod attached to the GoPro Hero 12. Since we're on the Max Lens mod, we have removed the ND filters on both cameras and we're on auto exposure with both cameras now. So this would be a good test to see what it looks like without the motion blur.
Holy cow! This is wow, that was aggressive. Both of these cameras can do 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second, but the GoPro can do a higher resolution at 120 and the GoPro can do 240 at 2.7K. For comparison, we're using 120 for these shots in super slow motion for both cameras. I think that's a fair comparison. Now for color, both of these cameras can do a 10-bit log color profile. That's what I've been shooting in for everything in this video. And if you don't mind color grading, it gives you the best image possible and the most flexibility when color grading later on. Now it's really just gonna come down to opinion of what you think has the best color image. But I have found that with the GoPro, it seems like once I've color graded one clip, it pretty much will work for the rest of the clips in my videos, unless there's some drastically different indoor or outdoor setting. But I did find that with the Osmo Action 4, even though I got great results out of it, it took a bit more work when there's variable light, say from a sunny setting or a cloudy setting in the same day. Interestingly, it looks like the file sizes are bigger on the DJI Osmo Action 4 versus the GoPro. In fact, looking at two clips side by side that are almost identical, there's a double file size for the DJI versus the GoPro. Since the file size is bigger, maybe there's more data and thus more image quality. I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Next, we'll talk about batteries. Both of these cameras use lithium ion batteries and I found that the battery life was pretty similar. Now I will say for the GoPro, if you're not using the white Enduro batteries, then don't even bother. The other ones are pretty much useless. One thing that I will flat out say DJI does better is the battery management system that comes in the adventure combo. They give you this awesome case that shows you exactly what the battery life is on each battery and it protects your batteries while they're in your pocket. They're not bouncing around. I looked to see if GoPro sold something like this on their website and it doesn't look like they do. This case does not charge your batteries. It just lets you know how charged they are but you can plug in the whole case and charge all the batteries at once. This seems like something that's a real missed opportunity for GoPro. I will say though, when it comes to switching out the batteries, I think GoPro's little door on the side is a lot easier to open with this clip that's a little more tactile than DJI's, which you have to slide this thing on the side and you have to get like a really good grip with your finger to get it open. Doing it with your fingernails, not easy, especially in the cold. So I would like to see that be upgraded in the future because it's pretty difficult out in the elements to get that door open. But another area where DJI I think excels is their connection system. It's extremely easy and simple. This magnetic system is awesome. When you first hear magnets, you don't think it's strong, but it actually is. It's got two teeth that grab it. Once it connects and you push it in and snap it, it's not coming off. Versus GoPros, they have the teeth attached to the bottom, but you still have to screw and unscrew for most things other than the little clips that maybe go on your helmet or snap into something else. Speaking of attaching things, attaching the ND filters on the Osmo Action 4 is pretty simple. You just put these on and off, but I do worry that if you tomahawk pretty bad on a powder day, this might accidentally come off and then you've lost your ND filter. Whereas with the GoPro, you have to twist off the cap that's on there and then you twist on the Polar Pro and that feels like a more secure connection to me. While we're speaking of accidents, I will say it seems like the Osmo Action 4 is a little bit more accident proof as far as missing shots or being in the wrong setting. Both cameras have touch screens on the back and yes, you can accidentally touch it maybe when you're not looking and change something, but it is much easier on the Osmo Action 4 to know that you're in the video mode that you want. When you press the mode button on the side, it'll tell you which mode you're in audibly. C1. And that includes the custom modes that you've made, by the way, not just video, photo, etc. In fact, you can lock out the photo mode so it's not even in there or the time lapse if you're accidentally getting into those sometimes and you don't ever want to use them. Whereas to use the custom modes in your GoPro, you have to be in the video mode and then go in and select the specific custom presets that you have within that video mode. So you have to use the touch screen to get to your preset customs. And if you accidentally swipe left or right, it's going to put you in photo mode or time lapse and there's no way to disable that. Plus when you press the mode button on the side you just get a single beep instead of knowing exactly what mode you're in audibly. So if the camera's on top of your head 
or it's really bright out and you can't see the screen easily and you just want to make sure the camera's on and you press the side button which is also the power button you might accidentally switch it into photo or time lapse. This is probably my biggest gripe with GoPros over the last few years. I can't tell you how many times I thought I captured something and then looked at it later and saw a photo was taken instead of a video or a time lapse. Or I thought the camera was recording, but I actually stopped recording when I thought I was starting recording due to just the beeps. Here's GoPro starting recording. And here's the stopping. And here's DJI's. Those two audio cues are significantly different enough that it's easy to tell when you're recording and when you're not. I will say the user interface on both cameras is good, it's just different. I think the touchscreen feedback on the Osmo is maybe a tiny bit better. Both cameras have voice activation. I found that both of them do a great job, but I think the GoPro is a little bit quicker. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. Start recording. Stop recording. There's also a difference in the tactile feel of the buttons on both of these cameras. I think the GoPro is a little bit easier to access, especially while you have gloves on out in the cold. It's a little bit harder to do that with the Osmo Action 4, but I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker. Both of these cameras have an app that you can use on your phone to download your footage and immediately upload it to your social media, what have you. GoPro has the Quick app and the Osmo Action 4 has the Mimo app. To be honest, I don't use either app that much. I'm usually just editing my footage in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or whatever editing software you might want to use. One thing about DJI's ecosystem that I really like though is color grading my footage, matching it with my drones. I use DJI drones exclusively and it's so easy to color grade my footage from the Osmo Action 4 matched up with my Mavic Air 2. Now what do I look for as the most important things in an action camera? Stabilization, color and image quality, and audio. And while both of these cameras do a good job at all of these, there are definitely some pros and cons with each. I think the GoPro does better audio quality overall out of the camera body. But I think the Osmo Action 4 has better image stabilization. The GoPro has higher frame rates and higher resolutions, but I think the color and overall image just maybe looks a little bit more cinematic on the Osmo Action 4. With the Osmo Action 4's slightly larger sensor, I think it does have a leg up on low light especially. However, these are both great action cameras for the day and age that we live in. I think it really just boils down to personal taste of what you think is best and what you're looking for in an action camera. I have continued to use both of these and will continue to use both of these going back and forth depending on what my needs are. I'm extremely grateful to DJI for reaching out to me to do this video and the full review video, which I already dropped. Check that out. It's linked in the description below if you haven't seen it. I dive into this camera even more. I'm so glad they sent this to me because this wasn't even on my radar. And frankly, I've been blown away by the quality that I've gotten from this camera. I can't wait to see what both of these camera companies do next as well as competitors because the competition just pushes all of them to be better. If you guys have another camera out there that you want me to review or another favorite of yours, just drop it in the comments below. Whether you're new here or not, if you like this content, please hit the subscribe button. It goes a long way for me. Hope you guys are progressing in anything and everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you real soon in the next one. Peace. Wait, stop, stop! Stop! For the love of God, stop! Snownado! <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. That's amazing! <laughs> That was beautiful! <laughs> Love it! He's back! He's back!